Uh, hi, how are you? This is Dr. Leland Ferguson coming from the beautiful uh, Serrano Valley in Mary Mesa at the Serrano Canyon Driving Range. I'm here with my friend Ken Sekulik and we're here to do a few videos on uh, golf improvement through uh, balancing the body biomechanically through chiropractic. So basically we want to see how we can improve the golf swing without having to introduce any more swing slots or, um, or lessons. We just want to improve the body, get, basically give it a tune up, find out where the faults are and uh, fix the faults and see what improves the swing. So what we're going to do here today, we're going to do five to seven swings on a driver. We're going to see how far he hits it what the dispersion rate is, basically how far he hits it to the left to the right of the target. We're going to be aiming straight down to the 250 mark, straight down the last marker uh, on the end, and we'll do about five to seven um, uh, drives. Then we'll test the muscles to see how they work, find the muscles that don't work, find muscles that do work, tune them up, and we'll do a couple drives to see if there's any change there. All right, so here we go. Okay. First drive is a whiff. Okay, uh, first decent drive is uh, three and a half pulls to the left. Third drive is about one half pull to the right. Fourth drive slice to the right at three pulls, three pulls right. Number five. Nice fade up the center. About a half pull to the left. And let's go one more, Ken. And another fade to the right. Fade one pull right. Okay, good. All right, so now, so we've done uh, five drives or six drives. First one was with five were on the fairway. Uh, now we're gonna take our swing stick and we're gonna, for objective measures, we're going to swing this. We'll do about five swings with this speed stick to find out how fast he's swinging. Um, this is just a base, baseline measurement, okay? Go do uh, do five swings and uh, record each one as you go along. Good. Look at it. Okay, first swing. First swing is at a hundred and about a hundred seventeen. So one seventeen first swing. Yeah, top of the red thing. Okay, number two. Good. 19. About 119. Good. Okay, 120. Okay, 115. Okay, 115. Number five. One sixteen. Let's go one more. One more swing. One nineteen. And one nineteen. Okay, so we have a baseline measurement for his swing speed and also for his his accuracy and distance. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and test them on the bench to see what muscles are working. Uh, that way we can sort of get assessment. This first video series, we're going to look at just. Uh, 
uh, looking at the strength and flexibility of the lower extremity. So we'll be looking at the feet, uh, feet, knees, and hips. Uh, feet are the first things that, that contact the ground. Um, so when you have an unstable foundation, you're gonna have an unstable uh, rest of the body when it comes to the swing. Um, then we'll evaluate the knees as far as like the hamstrings and quads. Uh, which come into the power play, and then we'll look at the ham, uh, the uh, the glutes, uh, which is your main uh, your main power source for your swing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that testing done. Again, this is just a baseline measurement, so um, we're gonna see how he does before and how he does after. What we're also gonna do is we're gonna outfit him with a set of insoles uh, for his feet, so that he is able to um, have a firmer foundation. Okay. Can go lay on your uh, go lay on your side, facing towards the camera. Face towards the camera. Good. So the first test is we're going to be looking at the we'll look at the the glute medius here. Lift the left leg up, up to the sky. Push up to the sky. Push up, push up, push up. Okay. When I press down, the glutes fire, but they don't fire at 100%, which means he's losing some some power potential uh, in his hips here. Okay. Go ahead and roll into the other side. Good. Same thing, left leg up, or right leg up, sorry. Push up to this guy, push up. Okay, so even when I press down here, he's strong at the beginning. So his right leg is definitely stronger than his left leg, but there's still, when I when I applied enough pressure, um, the the muscle doesn't lock and it doesn't come into play at 100%. He's maybe firing at about 80% with his left leg and at about 90% with his right leg, which means that over the course of like 18 holes, maybe 36 holes, uh, the glutes will start to give out and he won't be performing. Uh, even at this base level, we just started this morning and he's not at 100%, so we can't expect to be at 100% when he's at the finish of a game. So in order to optimize this game, we need to make sure that everything is working at 100% from hole one to hole nine or hole one up to hole 18. If he decides to play two uh, sets of 18 holes in a day, we need to make sure he stays good from start to finish from, from the first hole up to the 36th hole. Okay, uh, go lay on your back. This next test, we're gonna be testing the IT band. The IT band uh, is another stabilizer which helps in uh, um, aid in the process of, of the power. Can bring your left leg up, up and out to the left, up and out, up and out. So his IT band, IT band also doesn't work as well as it should be. Up and out to the right. And again, same thing doesn't work. So again, the reason we test this is because this all relates to his distance, his accuracy, and also his swing speed. We want all those to improve and the consistency of the game is the key of the game. If we can't get the foundation for the, uh, the fundamentals for the foundation of the body to work properly, we can't expect the rest of the game to follow suit. Okay, we'll look at the hip flexors and also the quads. Uh, go ahead and lift your left leg up straight, turn to the outside, push up to the sky, push up, push up, push up. Again, hip flexors don't work, okay? Right leg up, push up to the sky, push up, good. Again, right side, right hip flexors. So none of, his, none of the hip muscles that are important in the game aren't working at 100%. They're maybe working between 75 and 80%, if that. Um, once we get the muscles working, we should see a, a drastic difference, not just, not just today's, um, in today's uh, evaluation, but also we should see a, an improvement in the overall, um, in overall game. Okay, we'll look at the quads. Quads are an important part of the uh, part of stance here. I want you to go ahead and kick up to this guy. Kick up, kick up. Okay, so the quads are working really, really well on his left hand side. Kick up here, kick up. So quads have no problem. Now what we want his quads to do, we want them to be stable, but we also want the rest of the muscle groups to be stable as well too. Because if they're not stable, then it's, uh, you know, the, the saying goes, uh, you're only strong as, as the weakest link. Well, the quads aren't going to be the weakest link. It's going to be his glutes. Glutes are super, super important for their, any power, whether you're boxing, whether you're golfing, or whether you're playing tennis. Any sport you do, all the power comes from the hips, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and put this down. We're gonna go test the hamstrings now. This leg here, pull down to the table, pull straight down, pull down, good. And right side, pull down. Okay, so same thing, hamstrings are fairly, fairly strong, so there's no problem with the hamstrings. So when he goes to rely on a swing, again, the hamstrings and the quads are important, but not as important as the glutes, and those are the ones that are weak. Now he's not weak to the point where he's gonna fall over if he walks back to his car. Um, after the game, um, but what he what will uh, what he will find is that after 18 holes, uh, he might feel a little more fatigued and won't be um, as powerful as he was when he first teed off at the first hole. Okay. Um, can go ahead take your actually um, come on up um, stand up. So this is a cool little test. This is what we're. 
we're going to test his we're going to test his foundation so when it takes when i say foundation we're talking about the feet um, the feet are the first things that that contact the ground um, and most shoes there aren't there isn't a whole lot of contact so what we want to do we want to see how the rest of the body performs strength wise um, in regards to his feet so just lift your arm up here good push up to the sky push up push up push up so when i press down the arm's strong, but it doesn't lock at 100%, and I want that to lock. So if he's golfing, anytime he abducts his arm up, it's gonna be a problem. So anytime during the, the backswing, he's gonna have a problem. It's not gonna be noticeable at first, but again, it's gonna fatigue, okay? Uh, another part of swing, you're pulling across the body, so you're using your pecs, Pec, uh, go ahead, pull across to your left, pull across to your left, pull arm, arm straight, arm straight, arm straight, pull across, pull. So the pecs are strong, but then it starts to weaken out. Okay, that's not a good thing. Now watch the difference. Can okay, go ahead, just curl your toes, curl the toes, good. Push up to the sky, push up, push up. Okay, so before he curled his toes, his feet were basically flat on the ground. Uh, it was carrying all the weight. Now he curled his toes, and we now have a firmer foundation for the, for the feet. Now he's not gonna be able to curl his feet all day long to, to maximize that. That's why we're gonna use this for stabilizers, okay? So now curl your feet again, pull across, Okay, so again, in the first test, when he didn't curl his feet, when his feet were flat, both the pecs for, um, for flexion, also for abduction, both went weak. But when he, once he curled his toes and he made the foundation a little more, little more firm, a little more stable, the rest of the, week, rest of the body was able to fall suit. He was actually be, be, uh, able to be a lot stronger. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to make sure that the foundation is set. Like you wouldn't build a house on, on, a, on a sandy foundation, right? Just like the Bible says, right? You need a firm foundation for that. So we need to make that, make that firm. I'm not gonna ask him to curl his toes while he golfs because that's a swing thought. I don't want to introduce him to his, into his um, routine. So what we want to do, we're gonna put some insoles in the bottom of his, into the bottom of his shoes. And that's gonna allow us to, or it's gonna allow him to maintain that power without having to lose any, um, or not add any uh, swing thoughts into his routine. The last thing we want to do is we want, we don't want to teach him how to play golf. He only knows how to play golf. I'm not a golf instructor. I'm a, I, I'm into biomechanics. So I want to make sure that biomechanics works great. All right. So Ken, go take your shoes off. So these are A-lines. These are uh, foot supports made by the company A-lines, A-L-I-N-E. Um, they work really great. They run about a hundred bucks. Um, and what's great about these is that they support your feet and uh, your feet have three different arches. You've got an arch in the, in, this, uh, in the center, just like you already know. But then you have two other arches, one right in front, behind the toes and one right in front of the heel. And most arch supports only have just the inside. And this um, uh, arch support system helps because it actually flexes with the foot. It, 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 it uh, rotates and also flexes no matter how your foot goes. If you get one molded to you, um, there's, there are popular ones out there that are, that are gel-coated. Are, are gel lined. Um, they're ones that are molded to feet. They cost, you know, between three six hundred dollars. Other cheap ones, they'll tend to break after a lot of usage. These ones are very, very stable as they're the ribbed uh, for stabilization. So no matter how much you use them, they're going to stay with you for a long time. Okay, so we're just going to put these in here. So Ken has taken out his his shoes or has uh, his insoles from his shoes, and. Um, uh, as you can see, these soles, these are just generic soles, and they are flimsy. They're, they're very flexible. They don't work with feet. They're just there for padding and aesthetics. And so what we want to do, we actually want to fit them out uh, with something that actually works uh, to his advantage. Okay. Put that in there. Okay, so initial that now all I did, he did, we didn't train him how to do it. He just put the insoles in. They're really easy to put in. Um, so we're gonna just test them again. So can, can go to stand up, turn face towards the camera here. Good. Lift arm. In the beginning, when we first tested him without the insoles in, without having to scrunch his feet, his arm was weak here. Go push up to this guy, push up. So now, no matter how much I pull down his arm, the arm stays strong and it feels strong, doesn't it? It does. It's a, yeah, very, very strong. And sec second test, <laughs> it does feel weird. <laughs> it's weird being strong, right? and pull across to your left, pull across. So again, I didn't tell him to curl his feet, but now that the feet are supported the way they're supposed to, they make 100% contact with the ground with it, that they're supposed to do. The insoles they had before, they looked nice, they felt nice, but they didn't actually do anything for the body. In fact, they probably made his body worse than they did make it better. So our goal here is to um, introduce the body or make the body better uh, by making the biomechanics work better. If you continue your car up, every day, you think your car would work pretty well. Same thing with the body. If you can tune your body up from the, from the ground and up, 
um, you're gonna be better. Walking with these all day or golfing with these is like driving with four flat tires, you know? You can drive the car, but the car is just not gonna handle well as well as would be if you had brand new tires that were, that were pumped up to the very specific uh, PSI, okay? So, we've seen the improvement in just the muscle test. We're gonna see how they, how they improve with the uh, test on the bench. And go ahead and lay back down on the back. Okay, so the test we had before, um, we were he was weak in both his glutes, his power, and also his hip flexors. And all we did right now, we just introduced him to, um, a, to a couple of, of, of foot insoles to help his foot, uh, his feet um, align better, which means it's gonna translate to better, um, uh, better alignment and better function for the rest of the body. So we'll go test it out, see if it actually works. Turn to the outside, push up to the sky, push up, push up. Okay, now when we test the hip flexors, the hip flexors are strong because we've built up the foundation now, okay? Other side, up, push up to the sky, push up. Good, so I haven't adjusted him. All I've done is just change the feet. That's all I've done, just change the foundation. Once you change the foundation, again, like I said before, foundation is the, is the key part to everything else. You may have some other faults along the way downstream, but if you don't fix the, the basics, everything else can't can't work properly, okay? Go lay onto uh, this side, face towards me. Good, lift this leg up to the sky, push up, push up. Good, glutes are strong, other side. Up, push up. Again, same thing. So glutes are strong, now I, I know that he has more power here, okay? So we have more power in the hip flexors, more power in the glutes, and we'll test the, test the IT bands on your, on your back. Up and out to your left, up and out. Good, up and out to your right. Good, excellent. So IT bands, they were weak before, and now they're strong. So that's a really great start. Okay, come on up. Next thing we're gonna do, what we're gonna do, we're going to look at the speed of the swing. So these are gonna be six, six swings post, uh, post um, arch supports. Okay, six swings, Ken. First one. First one's 120, okay? Do it again. Okay, 120. 121. Two more. Okay, so that's amazing. So he so his first swings, 117, 119, 120, 115, 116, 119, they were all sporadic. They averaged about 117, 118. His next six swings, 120, 120, 121, 121, 120, 121. So between 120 and 121, very consistent across the board. After just putting insoles in his feet, we haven't adjusted him. We haven't done any cracking or popping. I haven't taught him any swing, uh, swing ethics or swing biomechanics. I haven't taught him anything except for just change the way his, his body moves. And so there's no additional swing thoughts. So he's not, he's not fiddling around with like, oh, should I swing this, should I swing this? He's swinging his natural way. Everybody's got their own swing. All we want to do is we just want to establish a better biomechanical pattern. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do some, um, do some drives. Wow, beautiful fade. Beautiful fade. So one and a half poles left. Okay. Another beautiful fade. It's like a quarter pole right. Two poles left. Four. 
fade straight down the center. Maybe like a quarter pole left fade. Uh, right down the center. Last one. Okay. Uh, one pull right. So after looking at his at his uh, at his drives, well, first of all, how did it feel, Ken? It felt entirely different. Um, felt like I had perfect control over actually my whole body throughout the whole swing. Which yeah, control, was, perfect control. Right, that's what that you should. So this is this is objective. This is a completely subjective feeling, right? I'm not, I'm not a golf instructor. All we're doing is we're taking the biomechanics and establishing the proper biomechanical form that he knows, and uh, and we're establishing a consistent pattern. Um, before he was he whiffed his first ball. Three and a half poles to the left, half pole right, three poles right, half pole left, one pole, uh, one pole to the right, um, and then now after we've established a better pattern just via his feet, he was in control. He faded every single ball, no slices. Uh, one half poles left, quarter pole right, two poles left, quarter pole left, uh, center fade, and then one pole to the right with a fade. All controlled, very very consistent. So we've seen huge consistencies in not just his swing speed, but also his um, uh, his, his control too. Um, so again, we're just establishing feet. Now we want to do further. The next step is to look at him. How, if we stress the body even further, how does that work? Um, we just looked at the lower body. We'll look at the upper body um, in, in weeks to come. Um, but stay tuned in and uh, hope you enjoy this video. Thanks.